high tech, low tech, or no tech, through our hobbies and our passions, the geek comes out in us all. The world's of geekdom. I am a geek and I'm proud of it. Geeks. Geeks unite. Well, let's get those nerds! Nerds! No! Did you just call me a nerd? Not all geeks are nerds. Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. What are we waiting for? And now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. My goodness, I need to cleanse my palate. I just got done watching Jersey Jersey Shore, the reunion, whatever the heck it is, with Sarah. And this epi- oh, this first segment is just going to cleanse my palate, bring a little bit of intellectualism into the mix. Even though I'm going to start off this first segment talking about a movie, talking about Jurassic World, the new Jurassic World movie, it's still going to be... I got to I got to demush my brain. But I did have a thought. Oh yeah, welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. I'm Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator. Welcome in. Let's talk about some geeky stuff. Let's be enlightened at least a little bit for the next hour. So anyways, while I was watching Jersey I can't why can't I talk? Jersey Shore with Sarah, I had I did have a, a thought because it was on MTV and something I noticed during the show is When they would play music during the show, as a bed for the show, they would have the artist information underneath whatever track was playing. And I said, well, and it got me remembering. It got me remembering when MTV used to be music television, and it used to be all about music, and they would play music on the TV, starting out in 1985, the very first music video on MTV was Video Killed the Radio Star. Video Killed the Radio Star. But it got me thinking. Perhaps it's okay that MTV no longer plays music videos. Because think about it. Everyone listening right now, whether you're listening to the podcast morning, afternoon, or night, or you're listening in the radio for whatever reason, you're driving around right now, Saturday night. Perhaps it's okay that MTV no longer plays music videos. Do you know why? Because music sucks now. Music is terrible. Would you want MTV to play non-stop music videos of modern day music here in 2018? Uh, I submit that, you know, you know it's cool with me that they don't. Especially now that there are so many channels available to you. So many channels, so many channels available to us that do actually focus on music. I haven't even watched VH1 recently, but I would imagine VH1 is rarely showing any music videos anymore like that used to be by the way vh1 was better than mtv always as soon as vh1 came out oh it was so much better than mtv vh1 used to do uh, the behind the music stuff that was great great stuff so getting back to the point there's a thousand channels on tv right now and there are a few channels that do focus on music like actual documentaries about bb king or buddy guy let me put a little pin in that buddy guy uh hat for now um eric clapton they would they show old mtv unplugged uh videos documentaries they're not documentaries they're concerts unplugged concerts like the stevie ray vaughn unplugged i can't watch a stevie ray vaughn Uh, or listen to a Stevie Ray Vaughan song, or see him playing live, like on YouTube. I can't watch Stevie Ray Vaughan without getting a legitimate tear in my eye, because he was so so good, and he just got taken so, so soon. August 27th, 1990. But back to the point, there are channels. There's a channel on, we have AT&T, 
Uverse right now, which Uverse sucks compared to Xfinity. I know Xfinity is the devil, but Uverse is not very good. I'm sorry. But there's a channel on Uverse that is good called Axis, A X S, and it's all about music most of the time. I think it changes formats halfway through the day, but at least half the time, it is just about music. It's just documentaries on a uh, like old bands from the 60s and 70s and 80s recording studios from back in the day Sun Studios where Elvis and so many other people recorded there are channels on TV available to us if you if you love music and you actually really dig real music I don't want to see any modern music videos and I'm going to piss off a lot of people right here Right now. Right here, right now. Beyonce isn't that great. There, I said it. I don't like Beyonce. I mean, I don't... I don't have anything against her personally, but her voice is grating. She's not a very good singer. And I know this is Houston, and there's a very very slim chance that she might hear of this. She might hear the show or someone might bring it to her attention. But B, I love you as a person. I just, I don't, I don't get the music. And I'm not even going to say the music is bad. I, I said one time that, uh, uh, oh, uh, what's that music video about the, uh, about the girls going out or something? Oh, geez, what is it? Oh, uh, would they did that stupid dance? She's wearing the black leotard. Oh, single it, oh, single it. I said something bad about that song once, and and my friend Andrew, who is a producer who makes beats, he's like, dude, don't you dare. Yeah, bite your tongue. The produ like, the subject matter of that song isn't is whatever, but he's like the music producer, the producer who made that beat is a, is a legend. So. <laughs> Like, one of the only people in the world who I thought would agree with me that that video's dumb and everything about it is dumb, he's like, no, don't you dare. Shh. He, like, put his finger over my lips. Shush now. I agree with you, Andrew. The music producer who made that beat is a legend, and I can't think of who it is off the bat, but once again, I appeal to Beyonce, because I know she's a Houston hero. She... Born and raised here in Houston. She is a Houston hero. I actually interned at the music, at the recording studio, Sugar Hill Recording Studio, where she recorded with Destiny's Child. <laughs> Rip the other two. But Beyonce went on. I got nothing against you, B, but I don't, I don't get it. And it's not just because I'm a white guy. She's amazing. Okay. What is her, what are her f followers and her fans called? What, what do you call her? Just B? Honeybees? Beyonce? Beyonce? Just Beyonce? Just Beyonce? I don't... It's just not my... You know, I have to... I have to frame this a little bit to make it make more sense. I don't have anything against people who like Beyonce. Nothing against it. I'm kind of jealous that I'm not as into uh, that music, her music, like everyone else because I feel like I'm missing out. And I've listened to almost all of it but I think it's more than her music. But let me let me let me frame it up a little bit. No, I don't have anything against her what she represents. She I, she's a powerful woman and she That's what they like. Okay. Okay. That's what I like. All right. <laughs> Is she in a STEM field? Is she doing any sort of uh science or technology, engineering or mathematics? I have not studied her. So. No. So it's not really That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to frame frame up my opinion in context of Geek Therapy Radio where I am more into older music like I just went on a rant about Steve Ray Vaughan and Buddy Guy and B.B. King and Muscle Shoals and, all, and uh, Eric Clapton someone who loves all that stuff like I do it's not so far-fetched to, to, to see that someone like me may not be so into Beyonce. Her, well, her music. Beyond, like I said, Beyonce the person, wonderful. 
I would love to have her on the show. Beyonce, if you're listening, reach out to me. Geek Therapy at iHeartMedia.com. We play your songs on the beat down the hall all the time. 93.7 The Beat, KQBT. You're on there all the time. You already have some sort of affiliation. I don't know. Like Everyone, everyone is just so goo goo gaga. Lady Gaga. Everyone is so goo goo gaga over over Beyonce's music. I'm like, maybe are my ears wrong? Do I hear her? Do I? N- hold on. Sarah's chiming off in the corner. You might be able to barely hear. She says, "Am I really? Do I really not like her music, or do I just like not like her or what she represents?" Or people like her music. Is it her music that they like, or is it what she stands for? I have no problem with what she stands for. That's what I'm saying. Is that Everyone loves her music, and when I hear the music, I don't hear anything, like, objectively bad with it. And, it's, and she doesn't sing out of key or anything like that, but for some reason, all the ingredients that, like, beat, A+, plus, singer, A+, plus, but yet when it comes together, to me, it doesn't, 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 2 in that situation for me. And that's what I'm getting at, is maybe since millions of people love her, Million, tens of millions, dozens of millions of people love Beyonce and her music. It makes me think, maybe I have something medically wrong with my ears that makes it so, so grating. Grating, like harsh. And, and that's, that, that explanation does hold some water because everyone's ears are a little different. There's an app on my phone I can turn on Dolby Atmos on my phone, the Galaxy S9 Plus, which, by the way, go look at the review on YouTube. I just recorded a a very fun review on YouTube for the Galaxy S9 Plus. Anyways, there's an app on the Galaxy S9 Plus where I can turn Dolby Atmos on and off. I think it's one of the only phones other than the Razer phone that has uh, Dolby certification. But one of the settings it has on there is it sets up a profile to the individual user's ears, and it makes me choose. It says, what age group are you in? like 13 to uh, 25, 25 to 33, and there's like 33 to 65 or whatever, and I'm 34. So what happens when you get older is the your bones change in your head. They get, they get less dense. So you hear frequencies uh, more or less as you get older. You hear it different. Everyone's ears are just different genetically. Our ear canals are built different. Our actual eardrums are built different, different thicknesses, different tensions and all that so i wonder if maybe beyonce's music is my claim is legitimate that i don't like it and it sounds harsh to me because her voice is 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 harsh to me her singing voice is harsh to me and once again i feel like i'm singled out like what am i missing what is everyone hearing here that i'm not hearing I think okay. her voice is harsh, but everybody loves her. I can see that. I get, I do get what you're saying, and I, by and large, don't like Taylor Swift, uh, her music at least, or I don't, I have no opinion of Taylor Swift one way or the other. She's not as a empowering of a person as I think Beyonce is, as far as, as, as far as a leadership position. I don't think Taylor... If only because of Taylor Swift's reputation precedes her, that she's very finicky when in matters of emotion and love, and she basically dates all these dudes just to break up with them so that she can write songs about them. That's genius, though. She's making millions by doing that. Is she breaking hearts, though? Like, are these guys leg- legitimately... I bet she's paying those guys. I bet she's like, look, okay, we're three dates into it. I'm counting this official. I'm going to give you 50 G's at the end of this because we're going to break up. That's the way, that's my business model. I'm going to, did she date John Mayer for a little bit? I have no idea. Anyways, all I'm saying is I heard so much hate either way for Taylor Swift. And then I heard these reviews of, of, of her, I don't know if her last album, but the only album of hers that I listened to, have listened to, is 1989. 
after like a few weeks after it came out and I heard lots of people that I even that I respected or whose opinions that I that I valued say that 1989 is a great album. And it's like, all right, well, if people that I respect are saying that 1989 is a great album, I will get 1989. And I bought and paid for 1989 and I listened to it all the way through. And I'm like, there are some, there are one or two songs on here that, that I like. Not that I'm going to put on repeat, but songs from Taylor Swift on 1989 that I do actually like. By the way, Taylor Swift started out as a country artist. Didn't she win a competition or something like American Idol or I don't know. No, she's just legitimate. She was a country artist. Anyways, 1989, there's one song, I think it's called Out of the Woods or Are We Out of the Woods Yet or whatever. The song goes, Out of the Woods Yet, Are We Out of the Woods Yet? It's a kind of a dark, ominous sort of beat. Talking about crashing a car and being at her boyfriend's side or she's in the hospital or something after a car crash. Are we out of, I, I think it's that song. Anyways, that one song light me up go to my instagram or my facebook and tell me what song that i'm missing what i'm talking about but the the hook is are we out of the woods yet are we out of the woods it's it's a good song and i kind of put i i beseeched myself to come into it hating it and just to listen to it objectively and just wait for something to catch me or not catch me and one song in that album at least caught me that it was good i also liked towards the end she does these behind the behind the music type things where she's like this is where the idea came from she records her ideas into her iphone and then sends it to her producer and uh kind of the songwriting process i didn't get to jurassic park in this segment i promise i'll get to it in the next segment there's more geek therapy radio coming up who knows if i'll talk more about music because i could keep going on and on about this all night if I have to. But anyway, more Geek Therapy Radio coming up. I'm Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator. Stay right here. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. Johnny Hamburger, mental curator. Let's get right back into it. I'm going to talk about Jurassic Park. Sorry. Jurassic World. Here in a second. But, at first I want to bring up something that I realized today. It kind of hit me like a lightning bolt of stupidity. And that is, there's a new movie coming out called Isle of Dogs. I-S-L-E space O-F space D-O-G-S Isle of Dogs, like Island of Dogs. It only dawned on me today because I'm a dope that Isle of Dogs is a play on word. Isle of Dogs. I love dogs. I love dogs. That only just occurred to me. I've heard that Isle of Dogs is supposed to be some sort of propaganda piece about cultural cultural appropriation. God only knows. Everything, everything has to be identity politics. This is not a political show. Just let a movie be a movie. And if the movie does have political overtones, so be it. Why does everything have to be one way or the other? Why does it, why? It's amazing. Okay. Sidetracked. And yes, I will get to Jurassic Park, Jurassic World in this, in this segment. There are works of fiction that, that have been written or produced to be specific political narratives. 1984. Uh, Is that political? Or is that more of kind of dystopian future type thing? 1984 is one of my favorite books. I've read it several times. Another one of my favorite books I read mm, back in 7th or 8th grade. We had uh, this program at my school called Accelerated Reader, which every six weeks you had to read a certain number or you had to 
reach a number a certain number of points per week or per grading period that you had to meet and uh you could read one book like worth maybe let's say it was nine points total that you needed to accrue over the six weeks so you could either read one super complicated book like war and peace or something and that was worth all nine points or you could read a bunch of small books you could read nine books that were worth one point each anyways I didn't do so great with Accelerated Reader just because I get so bored because I had ADD and oh my gosh, kind of a side note, but related. The Scarlet Letter is torture, torture, especially when you're in middle school. Maybe I should go back and read it now, but Scarlet Letter was gives, gives me anxiety just thinking about how much I hated the Scarlet Letter. Anyways, back on track. The book I read in 7th or 8th grade, my English teacher hated me. She always thought I was cheating or something, even though my grades were terrible. Anytime I would get a good grade on something, she's like, you cheated on this. Like, nope, nope. I just didn't care about the other stuff. I'm do- it pissed her off so much that I did good in her class, that I was so good in English class, that I, got a- that I would get straight Bs in her class. She hated that. She hated me. She was a disciplinarian. She hated my guts. I'm not going to say her last name. Any one of my friends listening right now who went to NCA with me, Northeast Christian Academy, knows exactly who I'm talking about. But anyways, she was the one in charge of in charge of the accelerated reader program. She's at least the one who checked to make sure and verify that you know you got all the points in the test. You had to go take this standard test after each book, and she wrote the questions to these tests. And she wrote the most obscure, oh, the most, I'm getting like fired up about this. She would write in the questions that were so obscure. And I'm talking, she would say, in chapter three, and you, you, can, you can't have the book when you're taking this test. You have to read the book and then you're tested on how much you, you retained of the book. But she would write questions. In the middle of the third chapter, the boy on the side of the street that so-and-so walks past, what color was his hair? What's the point? Why does that matter? That question is deliberately put in there to 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 flunk people like me. That has nothing to do with the story. That has nothing to do with with uh, with the plot of the book. Is nothing. It was this completely auxiliary little flake of writing that the author put in there just to set a scene. Has nothing to do with the plot. Has nothing to do with the story. Anyways, my favorite book that I read in 7th or 8th grade was Animal Farm. Animal Farm is a very political book. Very, very political book. And it's okay because on the outset, from the get-go, that book was presented as political, not even satire, just political fiction. Correct me if I'm wrong, but but it's 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 the bad type of socialism. By the way, another side note: when you hear people railing against socialism, they're thinking of Venezuelan sh- socialism. They're not thinking about diplomatic socialism like they have in Nordic countries. I'm not getting into whole thing. I'm not disparaging capitalism or our American democracy. We are a very young country. The model works, but we are very young. We have our growing pains. I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Don't email me saying, Johnny Hamburger on Geek Therapy Radio is a socialist. There's bad socialism, Venezuela, and there's socialism that works for, uh, works for this area of the world that's diplomatic socialism. One of them's bad, one of them works for that group of people. Would diplomatic socialism work in the United States? That's worth more debate. A debate we won't get into on this show. I'm just saying, don't throw capitalism out just yet. Don't throw our democracy out. Don't throw our republic out yet. We're still so young. Anyways, Animal Farm was a very political piece, and it was okay 
that it was so political because it set out from the get-go that it's political. And once again, I lied. I lied that I was going to get into Jurassic Park in this segment. I promise to God that in segment three, I'm going to get into, into Jurassic Park. If you're listening to the podcast, you should already know that because I'm pretty good in the descriptions about what I'm talking about in each segment. So if you're just listening to this blindly, you know, on the radio, driving, you know, driving around Saturday night, I apologize. Next segment, I promise I'm getting into Jurassic Park because I have some juicy opinions about that as well. In a nutshell, I'm excited and disappointed. <laughs> anyways, we'll get into that. So anyways, I took this test on Animal Farm. And it asked those... The whole thing was these... Obs- most of the questions were so super obscure that, mi- that I almost said her name. That my English teacher put in there to punish me. I legit think that she reworded the questions because anytime I went in to take the test... She was in there, typing away at the computer. I guarantee freaking tee you she changed the questions. That is speculation. <laughs> that is dramatic speculation. So, I read, Animal Farm, I read Animal Farm, and I retained quite a bit of it. Now, if you ask me now specifics, uh, it's been 20 years since I've read it. I won't remember everything, every detail, but back then... I knew it really well. I knew the plot points. I knew what it was saying. I knew I knew the uh, quote-unquote propaganda it was pushing. I knew everything about the book in those regards. Everything I knew everything about the book that made it important, that made it formative, that made it relevant. Knowing, knowing how much hay one of the pigs ate in chapter three, sentence, whatever, didn't, why? That's not important. Animal Farm. I need to reread Animal Farm. All these books that I've mentioned so far, 1984, Animal Farm, you got to go back and read. Another one I need to go back and read that I just blanked out on, now I remembered, is All Creatures Great and Small. I need to read that again. All Creatures Great and Small, I believe that had political overtones, and I may be understating it. I may be completely brain farting. So, the three books I talked about here. Mostly I talked about Animal Farm, I talked about 1984, and All Creatures Great and Small. By the way, on the way out of this segment, 1984, they say that we have 1984 right now. 1984 wasn't supposed to be non-fiction we bought 1984 we bought into this it was not the government forcing anything on it and anything on us we bought it from apple amazon and google we'll be right back more geek therapy radio back to Geek Therapy Radio, Mental Curator, Johnny Hamburger, coming at you right now. Quick side note, if you're watching this on YouTube, all the video you're seeing here is recorded on the Samsung Galaxy S9 by the rear camera. I do have it in pro mode, so I've set the aperture, I've set the ISO, I've set the focus. Looks pretty good, right? right? Looks pretty crispy, as they say. Quick note to wrap up what I mentioned going out of the last segment, we are talking about Jurassic Park here. I promise in just a minute or so, we're talking about Jurassic Park. Just to finish my idea from that I talked about at the end of the last segment about 1984, that we bought into it. People like to allude to 1984 in our modern society because we have flat screen TVs, we have a million cameras aimed at us every single day. Um, Talk about thought police, which could be Facebook talk about all sorts of things draw all sorts of parallels from 1984 into modern society but like I mentioned briefly at the end of the last segment it's not real that's not a good parallel because anybody who's read 1984 in 1984 that world was forced upon us by the government 
in 2018, the reality is that while we have a similar setup to what was depicted in 1984, which 1984 was written, I believe, in 1929, the early, early 1900s, I believe, maybe 1940s, written a while ago. The difference is the government didn't force, force it upon us. We bought it. We've lined up around the block to buy devices that listen to us, that look at us, that borderline read our thoughts. And it started in 2009 with the iPhone. When smartphones first rose up, when Steve Jobs and Apple created the iPhone, that got the ball rolling on 1984. But we lined up around the block to buy it. I've got an Alexa. I've got an Echo. Sorry, she's going to turn on now. I've got an Amazon Echo here in the room with me that I bought. That I bought. And I'm very aware of that. But really, it's to market. It's to sell you stuff. Is the FBI listening? I don't know. Whatever. They're going to hear a whole lot of farts. But they're just, if it's listening, it's to sell me stuff. Anyways, let's talk about Jurassic Park. And before anyone crucifies me, it's not called Jurassic Park anymore. It's called Jurassic World. Do you know why that is? Here's my speculation. It's because Michael Crichton is dead. So any new modern Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World movie that's coming out now is not canon. It's not Michael Crichton. It's, it's interpretations and extrapolations of where... It's artistic. They're taking a lot of artistic liberties with the new Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World franchise. Because Michael Crichton's passed away. I've read all Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park books and Jurassic World. They were amazing. Oh, my favorite book of all time is Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is one of my is my second favorite movie behind Back to the Future. I, to me, and I know this is going to sound crazy on a show called Geek Therapy Radio, I like Star Wars a lot. But Star Wars isn't even on my personal list. It actually it depends how long my list is. Star Wars is not my top three. My top three movies would probably be Back to the Future 2, then the first Jurassic Park. Oh man, I think maybe number three. I think maybe number three on my list actually would be Logan. Logan was so badass. All I wanted to see was what Wolverine would do in an R-rated movie. Because, you know, PG-13 movies showing the Wolverine slashing people and they just kind of fall over. But that's dumb. If, if you're getting slashed with those claws, you're, your body parts, you're being dismembered. And that's what an R-rated X-Men movie allowed. Was seeing what those claws would really do, you know, quote-unquote, in reality. And I didn't like it just because of the blood and stuff. I don't care about horror movies and blood and gory movies because they're bloody. I, I, don't, I don't really like that style of movie. I just was very interested to see what, lo, what Wolverine's claws would do if the rating was higher. That you could see it actually ripping through flesh and tearing heads off and arms off. And it was awesome. Logan was so cool. And it was just a good story also. Just to, it made you cry. No spoilers. Back to Jurassic Park, and in particular, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The new trailer came out today as, I, as, as, as the date of me recording this on April 19th, I believe the trailer was released today. I saw it for the first time today. I was bombarded with it today, so I have to believe that it actually came out today. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is coming out, I believe, June 22nd. So if you're listening to this podcast in the future... It already came out. And if I'm listening to it in the future, then I've already seen it. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I've been reading up on it, people's interpretations of the trailer, 
And there are something, immediately when I saw the trailer, I, I agree with what so far critics are saying about the trailer. Let me just pre preface this by saying I am so stoked, almost to the point of tears, to see a new Jurassic Park movie. It looks, it looks fun. I need to care, carefully choose my words. The new Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom looks so fun. It looks like dinosaurs running amok. Oh, it looks so great in that regard. It looks like just a really fun movie. So, like I said earlier in the show, I'm super excited about the new Jurassic World, but I'm also a little bit disappointed. I haven't even seen it yet, but let me tell you why I'm a little dis disappointed. This is just my opinion. This is just what I've noticed as a longtime fan of the franchise. I could have someone sitting across from me talking about... Star Wars, I could have my friend Buddy on here talking to me about Star Wars. Just talk me under the table about Star Wars. Because I, I don't know Star Wars as much as I know Jurassic Park. The Jurassic Park franchise. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is coming out June 22nd. And like I said, I'm excited to see it. It looks really fun, and but I'm also a little disappointed. Here's why I'm disappointed. We've already seen a sequel to Jurassic Park called Jurassic World, in which Injun goes uh, back to the island under false pretenses. Remember in, the, in Jurassic World, they went back to the island uh, to rescue the researchers that were studying the animals. They wanted to take the animals back to create a zoo. I believe it was in San Diego. They want to make bring the dinosaurs back to San Diego Zoo. So it wasn't a rescue mission. It wasn't to preserve anything or to save any human life. It was just to get animals and bring them back to the United States to set up a zoo stateside. It was financial gain. It's always about greed. Playing God and greed. What do you think Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is about? What do you think? The same thing. They send people over there under the guise that they're there to save the animals, to protect the animals. But really, they're there to help, from what I see in the trailer, sell the animals as military weapons. In the, fir in the first Jurassic World, uh, 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 in Jurassic World, they set it up, you know, they're trying to make the raptors into weapons. And the 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 first movie of the modern Jurassic Park series really established that not only did we bring dinosaurs back to life, but we are engineering their DNA to create new species that never existed for the purpose of warfare, to create living weapons. So in this new sequel to Jurassic World, I know it gets so confusing, in this new sequel to Jurassic World, they're going under false pretenses to save the animals or extract the DNA from the animals before apparently a, vol a volcano blows up and all the animals die. They're going to scoop up these animals and extract their DNA so they can save it so that they can market the animals as weapons, as military weapons of warfare, living weapons. So it's it's loosely, not even loosely, it's, it's pretty blatant ripoff of the first sequel. Now, would Michael Crichton be turning in his, his grave at all of this? I don't know. I don't know. It, since he died, they've really taken the franchise down this path of, of greed and warfare. In the first Jurassic Park and in the book and everything, they established that it is about greed, but it's about greed as a theme park. Like, they're going to make so much, so much money off ticket sales. People are going to get rich off ticket sales and bringing people from around the world to the park, and they'll pay any amount of money to see these dinosaurs. Now the series is about the industrial military complex, basically. It's political. Sorry if I popped the mic. It's way more political now. It used to be an ethical dilemma. Now it's political. Breeding animals and creating new species, playing God for the purpose of creating living weapons. So now you have Group A that's trying, that's going after the dinosaurs to capitalize off of creating living weapons, and you have Group B, Group B, or Group, what did I say, A and B, the other group that is about the preservation of 
of life. Just because we created this life does not mean that this life is any less worthy of living peacefully than any other, than, than let's say a chicken born naturally or a dog. That's a better example than your family pet. You know what? This is the end of this segment. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up the show talking about Jurassic Park. So just to stay here for a minute or two, and I'm going to wrap up my thoughts about uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom because I'm fired up about it. I'm honestly fired up about it. So we'll be right back in a couple minutes. I'm Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator. Visit all the social media. Like, follow, and subscribe. All the stuff. Geek Therapy Radio on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, follow, and subscribe. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. We were talking about Jurassic World, The Fallen Kingdom, the new Jurassic Park movie that's coming out June 22nd. By the way, as I mentioned before, this entire pod, this entire show, Geek Therapy Radio, this week is being recorded video-wise with the Samsung Galaxy S9. It's a rear camera, and I'm going to I'm going to post this up on YouTube. So if you want to see what the rear camera looks like in pro mode, where I've adjusted the ISO and the uh, aperture and the focus and all that, I've adjusted that on the phone. You can see kind of what the cameras look like under, I'm not going to say ideal situation, but a good situation. Back to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So far, what I've read lines up with my own opinions that we've long heard this ongoing idea that Hollywood has run out of ideas. And I'd agree with that because what are the most popular movies now? Comic book movies. They're comic book movies. That means Hollywood hasn't... Stan Lee created that universe. Writers of the comic books have created the universe that Hollywood is now capitalizing on. We have we had a Casablanca recently? Have we had a Citizen Kane recently? Have we had anything original? Or even an original adaptation of a book? No. We've we've had superhero movies, and I'm not against superhero movies. I'm just saying Hollywood. I don't. I almost don't blame it. But blame them. Blame the studios because they're they're going to put out what's selling. Right now, what's selling is material that is not unique. So the new Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom follows falls under this umbrella. Like I mentioned in the segment before, it is not an exact copy and paste from the original Jurassic World, the sequel to the first Jurassic Park. But it's pretty close. There is one... And if you're speculating... I was speculating. I was speculating when I was reading these opinions and these reviews of... These critics' reviews of the trailer. I was speculating. Is it really... Does it really draw that much of a parallel from... From the first Jurassic World? And then I noticed something that I haven't seen any critical piece of literature bring up yet. But it's something that I remembered... And it really conquer. It just, it's the nail in the coffin of unoriginality. In the trailer, you see a little girl sleeping in her bedroom while the new Abdono Raptor is that what Ad Ad Raptor Ado Raptor Ado Raptor? You know, Abdominus Rex from the last Jurassic World movie. Um. Now they made a small version of it called the. Ado Raptor. Is it called the Ado Raptor? Please don't write me up for it. Anyway, it's a miniature version of the Adominus Rex in a, in a Raptor form. It's supposed to be the ultimate living weapon, the ultimate killing machine. Highly effective, scary looking. So, at a few scenes in this trailer, has a little girl laying in her bed while this Raptor is like tapping on the window and opening the window 
and crawling inside this little girl's house, crawling inside her room, and then looming over her bed with its claws and its teeth and stuff like that. Little girl. Innocent little girl. Go back to the first Jurassic World. This Am I it's even saying the name of the movie right? It's the second movie. It's the sequel to the first Jurassic Park. The very first scene in that movie is is a very is a like a wealthy family. They take their yacht to an, an island close to Isna Nublar, and the little girl runs off around the beach around the corner, and the little compies come out of the woods. And it's a little girl; she doesn't know they're dinosaurs, so she has bread or some food or whatever, and she's given given crumbs to the the compies, um, like they're chickens or like they're pigeons or something like that. Then you see a few dozen more copies surround her and start nipping at her and stuff like that. And then it pans out, goes to the parents sitting on the beach reading or whatever, drinking cocktails. And you hear a distant scream of the little girl. And the little girl was attacked and mauled by, you know, a hundred of these little copy dinosaurs. Fast forward to this new movie. Little girl being attacked by... A dinosaur. You can call it a throwback. You can call it an homage. I don't think that's the case. I think that it's just a blatant. It's so funny to say this. It's like a ripoff of its own franchise. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I don't know. It just seems. It's there's so many parallels between the first sequel and this new sequel there's so many parallels little girl attacked by dinosaurs in the first one little girl attacked by a dinosaur in in this new one now what i don't remember is in the book in the book the original sequel to jurassic park was did the little girl die or was she merely horribly injured because i i think i think there's a little switcheroo to that little story element in the movie from the book did she survive in the book but die in the movie or die in the movie but survive in the book or survive in the movie and die in the book? I I honestly forget. I need to go reread it. So, to wrap it up, I am super excited, almost to the point of tears, of seeing this new Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. It just, because it looks fun. Dinosaurs running amok is Fun. I don't need Jurassic Park to be this super political, super philosophical, super ethical conundrum. We have Star Trek for that. I watch Next Generation for all that. I'm okay with the movie presenting an ethical dilemma, but please don't be propaganda. Please. I know that's a big tall order to ask of Hollywood, but please don't let Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom be propaganda. I already know it is. At least make it fun. At least make it fun to watch, and I have full confidence that it will be. And I also just now realized that it was The Lost World. That was the sequel to Jurassic Park. The Lost World. I'm dumb. Be good to each other, my geeks. Do something nice for a random person. And also, do something nice for yourself. We forget to treat ourselves nicely sometimes. So don't forget, I'll see you next week here on Geek Therapy Radio. Against all society, school was propriety. Used to raise my hand, but the teacher kept ignoring me. More concerned with the fifth level than the fifth grade. Street Fighter, Mario Kart, and Streets of Rays became the only place I learned to communicate. Now I'm all about these gold coins, selling all these power-ups, surviving off of mushrooms, and only trying to level up. Yeah. <laughs>